Good evening everybody. In this video, we are going to learn serverless data engineering. How to generate parquet files with AWS Lambda and upload them on S3 with infrastructure code. A step-by-step -step guide. So let's get started. So we are going to build the following architecture. The architecture comprises of the publisher are going to publish messages at a very rapid rate into an Amazon SQS queue. We are going to use a Lambda function to receive the message, process the message and dump the parquet files into S3. Let's take a look at the infrastructure code. On the, on the line number three, we are defining the serverless framework. On line number five, we are de declaring the provider as AWS, the runtime I'm gonna be using Python 3.8, the memory size as 800 megabytes timeout, and then I'm essentially declaring some tags because it's make, it, it, it's tags essentially allows you to monitor the cost. I'm using .env as true, and I'm gonna use two uh, plugins, which is the .env and also the Python requirements. The Python requirements will be used to create layers for PyArrow and Pandas library. Here I'm defining my layers, as you can see on line 27. Uh, the name of the layer will be data crunch. This layers will basically contain pandas and pyro library. And this will be compatible for Python 3.8. Here I'm defining the Lambda function on line 35. That's the name on line 36. On fifth, line 37 to line 41 are my environment variables. I'm referencing the layer on line 43 because I wanna use the pyro and pandas here. This Lambda function will be fired by, a, by SQS. So anytime the data comes into SQS, we're gonna fire this Lambda function and the batch size is 10, which means each Lambda is gonna receive 10 items. And on the bottom section over here, we are creating our resource object. This is our SQS queue. The visibility timeout has always has to be twice of what the Lambda execution timeout is. So my Lambda timeout is 200, hence the visibility timeout is 400. So let's take a look at the Lambda code now. All right, so from line number uh, line number one to line number four, uh, this particular uh, import unzip requirements is required because we are using a zip package, right? So we are deploying everything as a zip. So hence this is required uh, on the top. Line six to line 20, we are defining all the imports. Here I'm defining the PyArrow and Pandas library, Boto3, OS, Sys, and UUID and datetime object. Uh, again, I wrote a simple uh, Python utility class. This class essentially helps me to do some basic function. For example, given a complex dictionary, its job is to flatten out the data. data. Again, this particular dict clean uh, is used to, again, uh, you know, uh, do some basic data cleaning, right? And now here is the Lambda function that we need to see. Over here on line 66, we define a function called consume, which takes an event. On line 68, we define the class data transform, which essentially uh, is a ba basically a, a helper utility function. So for each records uh, that we receive from SQS, again, re remember SQS is gonna send us messages uh, to the Lambda in batches. So for each message, we iterate over that, we convert that into a dictionary, we flatten out the dictionary, meaning any complex attribute or any nested objects, we're gonna flatten that out, right? And then essentially I'm appending into uh, an array on line 70. Here you can see processed messages dot append. Then I create a pandas data frame on line 76. After creating a pandas data frame, I create a table object and then I'm creating a buffer object and then essentially it's pretty straightforward. I'm getting a year, I'm getting a month, I'm getting a day and here is the path to the data lake. So inside the raw, table name is equal to sample. Again, this is a hive style partitioning. Year is equal to, month is equal to, day is equal to and then the file name dot parquet. And here you can see S3 dot put file object. Here you can see in the body, we are basically providing the you know byte object and that's the key and that's the bucket name. So that is the code for the Lambda. Next step is pretty straightforward. We need to deploy the entire stack. So let's deploy the stack. First, you need to configure your serverless framework with the AWS access and secret key as shown in the first step. Then we need to install the plugin, serverless plugin install serverless.env and then we need to install the Python requirements. Now I'm installing the Python requirements plugin. Now I'll be deploying the stack by using the command npx sls deploy or you can also use serverless deploy. So let's deploy the stack.
Now this will take time. It will install all the necessary plugins such as pandas, pyarrow, and then essentially it's gonna deploy the Lambda function and the SQS on AWS. So my deployment is complete. As you can see, that's my CloudFormation stack. It's complete. Here is my SQS queue where we'll be publishing data at a pretty rapid rate. Here is my Lambda layers and here is my Lambda function. So now let's test out the entire solution. Now it's time to test the system to its full potential. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open up three terminals. I have a sample script which generates fake data. I'm gonna publish massive amount of data into SQS. So let's see, see everything in action. So currently I do not have any uh, folders as you can see on my S3 uh, called as raw. Now I have a script. I'm gonna remove the time.sleep here. And I have two. To, I have one terminal over here and then another terminal over here. Ready, Python, and I'm gonna say sample.py. Again, lot of messages, look at this. It's a lot of messages that are being generated, right? Again, I'm gonna start in the second terminal. Just look at it. These are a lot of messages that are publishing on the Lambda function. So let's take a look at the SQS, how things are coming in. So here you can see, uh, you know, Lambda is pretty well, uh, you know, auto scaling and, you know, as you can see over here, if we go to the monitoring tab, you will see like certain spikes of messages coming in. Again, we are publishing messages at a very, very rapid rate. Again, I can launch three, four, five, six terminal and it would pretty well auto scale automatically for me. Now let's basically go to the S3. I'm gonna refresh and here you can see we have the raw folder, table name, year, month, day, and then here I should be having some parquet files. Let me stop this. Let me stop that. And let me stop that as well. So yeah, these are all your parquet files, right? Which is being processed by our Lambda function. To show you one of them, I'm gonna use query with S3 select. Select Apache Parquet JSON over there. And then here you can see that's our JSON data. Now, certain tips and tricks. This is a pretty generalized module that you can use across anything. For example, you can uh, basically publish events from event bridge into SQS and automatically all those events would be essentially brought into S3. You can use it there as well. You can also use this SQS with SNS topic. So just subscribe to the SNS topic. All the events that are being published on an SNS topic will now be in, in S3 in a parquet files. So as you can see, this is pretty, pretty well generalized. Last but not the list, uh, just a couple of tips. Well, you can play around with the batch size. So maybe you can set a higher batch size. I chose the batch size to be uh, 10. You can go for 100 and you can play with those numbers. So I hope you have enjoyed this amazing lab. If you did, please make sure to hit the like and subscribe button. Also, a complete detailed guide can be found on my LinkedIn and the source code will be will be available on my GitHub section as well. With that being said, I hope you enjoyed. Keep smiling, keep programming. And if you have any questions, please do not hesitate to mention that in the comment section and I'll try my best to answer it. With that being said, keep smiling, keep programming and see you guys next time.